Tonight, Mayor Pete Buttigieg lunching at Harlem's famous Sylvia's restaurant with Reverend Al Sharpton. Now, it was an important day for Buttigieg because he's acknowledged that he needs more diversity on his uh, list of supporters. Among the topics that came up, his new competitor. How does Biden change the race? I think, in a way, in, in one way, we've got a lot in common, right? I mean, he, he speaks to a kind of middle of the country. In another way, the contrast couldn't be more, more different, right? I mean, we're talking about... We're talking about generational change. We're talking about how there's no going back, how we've got to come up with something that'll work for the next 40 years. Out front now, radio host who has interviewed eight and counting Democrats running for president, Charlemagne the God is of The Breakfast Club, joins me now. All What's right. up, Aaron? Thank you for having Good me again. Good to see you. All right, so last time we were together, uh -huh. you were talking about, you know, your impression of the various candidates. And you said Buttigieg was the most comfortable and authentic, those are the words you used, person that you had interviewed thus far. Yes. Um, you know, his uh, communications director, Liz Smith, tweeted today a picture uh, of him and uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. So what do you make of this? Is this authentic or is this just... I need to go kiss the ring. What is this? Um, I think it's authentic, and I think it's a combination of both. You know what I'm saying? Uh, going to sit with, you know, Reverend Al and Sylvia is a rite of passage for a lot of candidates. He's only the second candidate uh, of, of, of this season so far to go sit with uh, Reverend Al. So I think it's a little bit of both. You know, I think he is kissing the ring, and rightfully so. He was actually at the National Action Network convention the same day I was there with Reverend Al as well. So right. he's reaching out to, to the black community, as he should. So why not reach out? So, so when Buttigieg was on your show, you talked about a lot of things. Obviously, race issues was on the list. You also talked about, you know, Chick-fil-A, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in light of, of him. Here is some of the headlines that you got. Did Barack Obama set the table for, for, for someone like you? I think so. I think in a way, if, if only because people said, you know, this can't be done. Not just because he was our first black president, but... Um, well, exactly that reason. But also because um, he was unafraid to be smart. What about Chick-fil-A? Do you like Chick-fil-A? I do not approve of their politics, but I, I kind of approve of their chicken. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh my you my kind of guy, man. <laughs> I'm worried about Mayor Pete's diet, because even today at Sylvia's, he had fried chicken, macaroni, and cheese, and collard greens. Oh, he, I know he's a young he's man. Young. But yeah, but God dang, <laughs> diabetes can catch us, catch us all. So, so... Do you think that the glare of the spotlight, I mean, this is all very new to him, and obviously he's coming, you know, your words, authentic. He mm -hmm. comes off that way. But is there a risk, do you think, of that changing? Nah, I think he's handling it with, with, with grace and class. Like, he looks built for the spotlight. Like, even though he's from a small place, mm -hmm. South Bend, Indiana, it looks like he's ready for the big stage. Like, even if he doesn't become, you know, president in 2020, you can see that he's going to have a bright future in politics in some way, shape, or form. So as you were being light there, you were talking about age. And obviously, yes. Buttigieg is talking about Joe Biden, you know, mm -hmm. changing the race uh, in that, that bite I played with Reverend Al Sharpton. He, though, is talking about their age difference, right? Trying to make this as a point of a generational change. Joe Biden is a different generation. Very, right? I mean, let's, so. let's just be frank. Joe yeah. Biden is, is, is what, going to be 77 years old this yeah. year. Does age matter? Yes, I do think age matters. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're dealing with somebody like Joe Biden, because, you know, I got my questions about Joe Biden. Like, you know, after learning more about Joe over the past few months, I, I question why even Barack Obama picked him as, 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 as vice president, you know, just because of things like the 94 crime bill. And, you know, you mm -hmm. know, he didn't just you know, vote on the 94 crime bill. He wrote the 94 crime bill, especially one of the passages that was uh, a real big push, you know, for mass incarceration, you know, and, and, you know, just things he said, like Barack Obama is the first mainstream black uh, person who was clean and articulate, like just that wording you know, disturbs me in, in, in a lot yeah. of ways, you know? So I just wonder if somebody uh, that's, that's, that's Joe Biden's age, can you really teach an in, in, in old dog new tricks? And yet when he came out, Charlemagne, mm -hmm. and announces his candidacy, he makes it all about race. I yeah. mean, right? All about, all about Charlottesville, all about race. I'll play a, a brief clip of it so we can hear it together. Here he is. Very fine people on both sides. With those words, the President of the United States assigned a moral equivalence between those spreading hate and those with the courage to stand against it. And in that moment, I knew the threat to this nation was unlike any I had ever seen in my lifetime. What do you make of that choice, given that, your concerns? That's, that's, that's not enough for me. Like, you know, not being racist should be the basics 
of our president. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are your policies? Policies. You know what I'm saying? What are your your new initiatives? What are you putting on the table that's going to help us, you know, move forward in the next 30, 40 years as a country? That's why I prefer a Mayor Pete over a Joe Biden because I feel like Mayor Pete does have mm. things of substance that he's put on the table. He does have actual ideas. I haven't heard any new policies from Joe Biden thus far. Well, it's dream selling season, yeah. right? And 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 as you point out, people have identified. The black vote, it's so crucial, right? It's so crucial. It's yeah. so central. So this reparations issue comes right in the heart of that. Mm -hmm. They've all been asked about it. You've asked, uh, you know, candidate after candidate about it. Let me play just some of their answers. Now, why does it seem like this week you've been kind of dodging the reparations question? To my mind, it means that we have to deal with the fact that there is enormous disparity uh, between the black community and the white community. And that issue has got to be addressed. The idea of reparations is the idea of when something is broken, we fix it. When there's Absolutely. a wrong, we right it. Where it goes off the rails, like you're saying, is, you know, people are picturing kind of check in the mail. And when, when it's framed that way, um, there's a lot of people who, who can't picture how that could be done in a way that's fair. A lot of those socioeconomic gaps were created because of slavery. Like, they're still affecting us to this day. Yeah, and, and I'm not convinced that we're ever going to fully come together as one nation, mm -hmm. like heal, mm -hmm. uh, until we address that original sin. That's it. I mean, that's what it's about. You know, like people think this reparations thing is about handing out checks. It's just about America acknowledging, uh, acknowledging the fact that systemically they did something to put black people in very bad positions. So now they need to do something systemically to get us out of those positions. It's really and not rocket science. Do you trust all the Democratic candidates on their answer because this has become a litmus, no. litmus test this time, right? Yeah. And they're all gonna they're all gonna try to say something positive about reparations. Yeah, but that mean, doesn't mean that any of them are gonna do it. Yeah, I don't trust any politician right now because it's dream selling season. You know, like every single politician is telling the American people what it is that they want to hear, and when they're sitting down with certain people, they're gonna speak directly to those certain people and tell those people what they want to hear. So if reparations is the thing that they want to hear, and all you have to do is simply say yes. I agree with it. I'm for it. I'm down to fix it. You'd be a fool to mess that question up. <laughs> You'd be a fool to flub it. All right. Charlemagne, thank you. Thank Good you. Good to see Aaron, you. Thank you for having me again.